Good day my friends. I'm here today uh, at uh, the home of my friend Yuha and so the special treat is he went to a conference and uh, at this conference he learned some things that I think could be helpful for myself and for you. So let's just uh, spend some time here with Yuha and see some of the things he learned um, last weekend at this conference he went to. All right. <laughs> We're back with my friend Yuha. Yuha, good to see you, brother. Good morning, friend. All right. You, good to see you again. My pleasure. Well, we talk a lot about breathing life into the world, and uh, this here is a man who breathes life into me. And this morning, I'm hoping that, you know, what the Lord has been teaching him, the big guy upstairs has breathed life into him, and hopefully what he shares this morning that he learned can breathe life into you. So, Yuha, um, I know you went to a conference, and uh, why don't you take a few minutes just to share with us some of the things that, uh, you know, were revealed to you um, from that conference you went to a couple weeks ago. I went to a conference called the Conquer Series, and it was a men's uh, conference on uh, sexual sin, how it affects uh, myself, my family, people around us, how uh, uh, the, this society in this day and age is... Uh, how uh, rampant and how dangerous pornography is and how it affects the mind. So I, I made a whole pile of notes today, so I've, I've I highlighted some of the things. So I'm basically going to go through my notes, and uh, the first thing that uh, came to mind is that the battle zone is in the mind, and uh, usually it's a visual, visually usually see it, there's a temptation there. Temptation gives birth to sin, and uh, that gives uh, birth to death. Right, so in that uh, in that sexual sin, whether it was myself or somebody caused it or whatever it was, wherever it came from, whether it was pornography or or adultery or or you know looking at uh, pictures in magazines, and uh, there's two things I can do with it. I can either restrain uh, restrain it or retain it. Uh, I can restrain the, the, the those urges, those uh, curb those urges through through Christ's blood, or, or I can retain it and continue to live in that sin, which would bring, bring me to death. Um, uh, what did I write here? Uh, there's an addictive cycle and the denial cycle. The problem is not moral, it's in the brain. So mm. if it's in my mind and it's in my brain, how do I fix that? It goes the renewing of the mind, washing of the wa washing of the water of the Word of God. Right. So it's renewing my mind, uh, refocusing as opposed to that sinful nature of mind. And as Christ starts to transform me, I have to deal with it. How would God deal with it? How would God want me to deal with it? And uh, the enemy would want me to buy into those lies, to stay on those paths of adultery, of sexual sin and... Uh, you are binging and purging is one of those things we'll do. Uh, do you have a qualified flight instructor? Do I have some mentor? Do I have somebody I look up to? Somebody that's been there, that knows the word, how to do that? Uh, an accountability group, who do I deal with? Uh, um, if I hang out with my old friends, uh, you know, there, then I, my old behaviors uh, resurface and then... Uh, so, sorry, Yuha, so I think what I hear you saying is uh, you know, if we believe the lie, you yeah. know, we have these things come into our minds sometimes and they might not be true, but if we start to believe them, then they become true for us. And if they're a lie, then we start to act on these lies, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, and, and if I'm hearing you correctly, we need other people. We need support systems. We need people to speak truth into us. You said mentors, mentors. you know. Mentors, yeah. And, uh, uh, fellowship groups, church groups, 
uh, wherever it is, I do a thing called listening prayer. So whose voice am I hearing? God's voice, the enemy's voice, right. or my own voice? And I, I, I wrote here, had enough of having enough. I've had, I wow. had enough of having enough. I will not be satisfied until I am free. And well, how do I get set free? By washing my mind with the word of God. Right. Uh, the enemy uses a stronghold for the enemy. Is the, it's called the arousal wound. And what that does is it, it, it starts to... Uh, first, it might be visual. You might be walking down the mall and you look at uh, a woman, and then you have your 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 mind process goes right to, well, I'd like to, you know, maybe have an intimate relationship, maybe just have sex with this woman. So that's where it is. It's the enemy usually places something in front of you that's visual, and then it start it goes from the visual to the brain, and then it then if you act out on it, then you know sin it gives birth to sin, and of course that gives birth to death, right? Death to self. So. Uh, processing the wound, strategic uh, strategies can't change what you don't understand. If you don't understand it, how can you change it? You have to. Right. You have to be educated on it. You have to learn about it, and uh, you know, look, going to conferences, going to places that will speak truth into my life through the Word of God. If it's from God, of God, and for God, then it will be the godly thing. And tools to re, uh, to conquer this is uh, there's uh, prevents relapse. What were you feeling? What was your trigger at that moment? Uh, prevents crashing, uh, and it's it's the heart of bondage, and fear. All fear uh, from fear is is uh, the response to fear is anger, and uh, selfishness is fear driven. So you look at well, what's in it for me? It's my sexual gratification. It's all about me, you know, doing my thing, and uh, that you know, God when he created man and woman to be together they said we will leave the father and the mother and they will become united as one flesh and that is a godly bond it is of God and from God and it was designed for human relations between a, a man and a woman in the marriage uh, uh, you know under the covenant agreement of marriage uh, healing is through the Holy Spirit it's an inside out job it's not a mental thing it's a spiritual thing it's got to go deep deep down inside God wants to heal the father wound or whatever that father wound looks like it not necessarily from your father but it was somebody from the past that had created a wound in you for you to later even maybe as a child you you, you were wounded and later and as an adult you start acting out on that wound because of uh, you know the monkey see monkey do thing you 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 what is it that I'm doing? Why am I acting like this and and uh, What did I go? With? So there's what you're saying is that there is an acknowledgement of wounds from our past and When we get this revelation this self-awareness of some things that might trigger us as an adult You know when we look back and go hey well, this happened, this happened, and this happened. So when we become aware that these things can trigger us, uh, what you're saying is that having that awareness now can help prevent us from making the same mistakes in the future if we'll bring that into the light. Absolutely. And, and the, I wrote here, what people do to you, what people take from you, wounds, wounds from sins of the past. Uh, it creates intimacy problems and it creates a standoffishness. Like, okay, if I've been wounded before, I don't want to get to that point where I'm I'm able to uh, get past that, and then I don't want to get into another relationship because of the fear of being wounded again. Right. And uh, right, it, it, that makes it becomes, sense. Uh, it really is an exploratory process. You have to explore it. You have to, not only do you have to look at it, you have to face it. You have to go straight dead into it. You know, walk straight into your fear and, and, and head on. Not as I would figure, oh, how is you going to figure this thing out? It's God's word that, that enables me to, to get past this point of, of that bitterness, that resentment, that jealousy, that anger, whatever it was that wounded me. Well, guess what? Uh, wounds will heal if you take the right procedures and the right processes to get the wounds to heal. And uh, it's not something I can do. It's what Christ does in me in the washing of the Word. They get to wash the Word, read the Word, get into the Word. Like-minded people, church groups, mentors, uh, counseling if, if it's necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, so... I have a question, you ha, because I've, I've heard this before come up when we talk about things that have happened to us in our past and you know when you're dealing with your own brokenness I know that some people say you know I need to fix myself first I need to heal first until Frederick's better until Yuha's better then how can I help others and 
I'm just looking for your, your, your own thoughts. I mean, what do you have to say about this idea of fix yourself first and then you can help fix others? Or, <laughs> or is there something about, when we talk about breathing life, for example, can, can I still play a role in breathing life into somebody else if I'm still struggling with my own stuff? Like, like do you think you have to achieve a certain point and then you can help or can you help others while you are getting help yourself what do you think about that i believe that you can help others as you're being helped because it uh, it um, as you are learning and and you get through some little parts little tidbits of this recovery process uh, uh, it starts to become something new and usually something new in me excites me and I want to right. tell somebody about it and it's like wow I just learned this hey, God, can I share with, with you what I just learned and, uh, that makes and, sense. and God doesn't wait for me to be perfect to come to him God accepts, ac accepts me and takes me for right where I'm at in my journey and uh, it uh, I, I also learned here that I'm one of those kind of guys that uh, I, I weep openly because sometimes I weep for my own uh, sinful condition as I recognize what's for sin for what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I weep for my own condition because Christ is saying, showing me, teaching me, loving on me unconditionally. And uh, it, it, uh, there's a, th a road here that you have to, some of the reasons you have to be ruthlessly honest ruthlessly that means there's no holding back no matter what you might think of others might think of, of you or what you're doing or you're saying well nobody else might know your sin but god knows mm -hmm. god sees all so you're you're talking about being ruthlessly honest with yourself before the big guy upstairs Absolutely. not not with other people per se but with yourself being honest with yourself and god yeah right honest to god because god knows every thought god knows every action god knows how many hairs i have on my head <laughs> right and uh and the, uh, <coughs> with with being ruthlessly honest it it starts the the healing begins right so uh single mindedness yeah. of following christ christ mindedness mindedness it means the renewing of the mind it's a process it's 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 not something like okay i accepted jesus christ as my lord and savior and suddenly the light switch on okay i'm healed i'm whole i'm perfect uh eh, thanks for <laughs> thanks for playing johnny but that's not how it works and uh, it's not snap crackle pop no. hey snap crackle pop i'm fixed yeah. i'm healed born again let's go amen to that and you know i didn't become an addict and an alcoholic uh, overnight i didn't wake up one day and say i think i'll become an addict i think i'll become an alcoholic i think i'll ruin everything that i've ever worked on in my life i'll destroy everything that's ever meant anything to me and there's an emergency procedure plan here. Is that uh, some of the one, uh, there's four steps that you take. You write a letter to yourself right. uh, of, of what is it you might say. Carry pictures of your family, um, uh, hmm. tokens of victory, as you see on my wall, reminding me of those places where Christ has given me victory, even though I may not have given the glory to God at that time that I was winning gold medals in the martial arts. And then the list, uh, uh, oh, make a list of of, of the of the consequences of acting out behavior but do that in in a calm mind because you'll when you act out and if you're acting out in a in an angry mind then all you're going to do is just blurt a bunch of garbage that's going to come out when your mind is calm you're at a place that you can write these down so write a letter to self uh, pictures of family tokens of victory uh list of, it's like for me it's like a list of gratitude what is it you know look at all my problems but look what god has done for me i can i can name dozens of things uh in my life so i'm gonna sorry you i want to just ask about that because i think a lot of people do struggle with this anger that sometimes wells inside of us but what people do to us right and sometimes we don't know how to respond because we want to get revenge or we want to get mad at them so this might be a little personal but so what do you do like what practical things do you do when when things are happening in your life and you would just want to lash out you want to get mad you want to fight you want to kick i mean how do you deal with that when your heart's in the right spot you want to be someone who makes the world a better place you want to be loving your family and friends and be a difference maker but when you feel the honest human emotion of i want revenge i want to get back i want to do to them what they did to me how do you deal with that that's a very good question. Uh, my former self, because I've become a renewed in Christ, I am a new creation in Christ, my former self would have lashed out. I want to be right. I want to be heard. I want to be angry. I want to throw this stuff in your face. And uh, 
my new self as, as, as I'm being trained and learning because it's a process step by step as someone is angry with me I respond in Christ like love mm -hmm. and sometimes that means just being silent and letting the person vent right. hear what they're saying uh, don't just marginalize it minimalize it slough it off as yeah okay you're done yet you know and then as I quiet my spirit uh, God does the work I don't do the work just by being quiet and being still and knowing and then as when I do respond it's out of love it's not out of self gaining something uh, what's in it for me and as as God's love flows through me then others will see it not in my words but in my actions wow. it's how I demonstrate what am I going to do right and uh, actions speak louder than words right so uh, there's another survival kit we talk about being hungry lonely angry and tired yeah. Right. At what time when I'm, you know, that's when the enemy comes, uh, it, when it's ferocity, not when I'm strong and at the Olympic level, level of my game and what I call my spiritual faith walk. It's when I'm tired, when I'm, I've had enough and somebody says something to me is how do I respond at that moment? You know, and as tough it is for as it is for me sometimes, because I'm, you know, I look at myself. Well, I'm the dad, I'm the husband, I'm whatever. There's titles that I've been given to me, but the people that are in front of me are gifts from God. They are loved children of God. My wife, my kids, my friends. We are all created in God's image. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what color your skin is. You are still one of God's children. And uh, if I'm going to talk to talk then I have to demonstrate through my actions that I have to walk the walk that I've been called for see that that that's inspiring and powerful I, I, I think you know pointing out that you need to be aware of there's times when you're weak and, and may it might not be the best time to approach a situation when you're actually hungry or you know you're angry or you're feeling lonely or you're tired there's moments that every human experiences and physical and emotional weakness or low points that's a time where you need life breathed into you that that's not necessarily the time that you go out and 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 try to be the love giver or the life giver you need that to be poured into you so then you can go back and pour it out into someone else so you uh, I think uh, uh, at this point um, I'm wondering if you'd like to sum up some of some of the the points that you, you took over the weekend. Uh, you know, take a take a, a moment or two now to kind of wrap it up and and leave our viewers with a message that uh, you really can sum up the weekend you had at this conference. Uh, that's a great way to look at it. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to pray scripture into my life. Uh, that's God's word, that's God's truth, not God, yours truth. How God would respond and how God would think in every circumstance and every situation. Um, uh, where did I write it? Okay. God, about you, not what you get out of Jesus, is but, but who he is in you, in, in you. It's the blood of the lamb, it's the word of your testimony. What Christ has done in my life. And uh, uh, where did I write it? Uh, to begin at the moment, oh, here it is. Uh, major healing point began at the moment that I spoke truth into my life which which was goes back to my original point of being ruthlessly honest the enemy's lies were this well what is God's truth uh, to 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 take that back I'm 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 not gaining but God as he and Christ as he works through me I start to take back territory that the enemy has encroached on upon me it's 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 something that Christ does in me and for me. And, and as my, uh, my vulnerability is decreased as I live in truth, the more I live in truth, the less foothold the enemy has. And yeah. there was one thing there that they talked about. It says, your, what is your struggle at that time in this moment in your life? You write it on the sole of your shoe. You write the lie on the sole of your shoe because the enemy has been stamped on your foot. And then uh, you literally write it on there and then when you're walking around, it's a reminder for you to, to how much God loves you immeasurably. We can't measure it in human terms what an unconditional love looks like. Myself, I, have, I, I, I tend to, as a finite human being, tend to, um, you know, put, well, if you do this, I'll love you. If you do that, I'll, no, no, no. Unconditional means there's no conditions none whatsoever 
and uh, you download things to the left side of your brain through the word, written word, and then through the right side of your brain, you start speaking those things out, acting those things out. Not that I'm going to go and preach to everybody and preach to the world. It's it's my actions speak louder than words. It's 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 going and dealing with the pain, dealing with my fears, dealing with my anxieties. Head on, ruthless honesty, go for it, straight into it, embrace it, and at the other end, as sure as the, you know, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, God's truth will all. And always, you know, if you believe it, you receive it to that point. I want to be infused with God's truth, not you us. And uh, the, the more I think daily, I can become more Christ-like. And that is exactly what Jesus did for me, was to wash me clean from head to toe. Well, my friend, uh, I thank you for letting me come and hear some words of wisdom today. Um, I look forward to hearing more uh, thoughts that you have as you're continuing to become, you know, a human being on fire for things of God. And I, I love your passion. And uh, hopefully next time we can uh, continue to grow together. So thank you, my friend. Awesome. Thank you. It's been 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 a pleasure, and uh, we'll uh, see you next time. And remember, Ruah is all about breathing life into the world one person at a time.